The Third Battle of Ypres, fought on the Western Front in World War I, is more commonly remembered as Passchendaele. Fought throughout that rain-soaked summer and autumn of 1917, it has become synonymous with mud, suffering and sacrifice. I have a personal connection to the battle as my great-great-uncle was killed there. Recently, I was able to purchase a collection of genuine battlefield relics and made a short film about it on my channel. This film will look at three of those relics in more detail, focusing upon what they would have looked like when they were new and how they connect all of us to our shared heritage. The first item that I want to share with you is this. It's a fragment of the famous Mills Bomb, the hand grenade widely used by the British Army in World War I. This is a top section, and on the outside there you can see the famous tortoiseshell-like grip. The pin of the hand grenade would have gone across here. That's the pin that would have been pulled out to set the fuse going prior to the grenade being thrown. And also, very interestingly, if you look in the top here, you can see a small plugged hole. And we can have a look at that from the inside as well. There we are. There's the metal plug still in place. Now, this is the hole through which the grenade would have been filled with explosive prior to being sealed. This is essentially what the Mills bomb would have looked like when it was first made. You can see the top section and the ring on the pin that I was talking about and just here is that sealed hole through which the grenade was filled. This next item is the front section of an explosive shell. Many people don't realise just how sophisticated many of these shells were, particularly by this stage in the war. You can probably see in there a screw thread and this was part of the mechanism on the nose part, if you like, of the shell that would have incorporated a timer that determined when it was actually going to explode. This then is roughly what the nose section of our shell would have looked like. There's the cap on the extreme end, which we've just looked at. And at the bottom there, you can see the calibrated timer mechanism that could be set prior to the shell being fired. This last item I find equally poignant. It's a horseshoe, yes, but it's from a Passchendaele war horse and therefore has its own story to tell. On the Western Front in particular, the cavalry never made the kind of impact that many people had expected early on. But horses still had a vital role to play, such as here, carrying supplies to the front line through miles of mud. It should be remembered that hundreds of thousands of horses also died in World War I. Thank you very much indeed for watching my film. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do please feel free to leave me a comment. And also let me know if there are any of the other relics from my earlier short film that you'd like me to explore in a bit more detail. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It's free and you'd be more than welcome. Thanks again and bye for now.